to Listen and Chill, a podcast where you sit back, relax while we talk about everything that is going on in today's society. My name is Marjorie Rodriguez, and today we're talking to the one and only Katie Mitchell. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I want to talk about how we met. Do you remember how we met? I think it was through Keandra and Lorene, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I've had Keandra and Lorraine before in my podcast, but not like visually, but I met them in college and then I met you because you're the roommate and everything. And then, yeah, we became friends because of that. (laughs) I remember that you guys were first in a dorm together for you. And that's when I started hanging out with them and I would like go at the dorm and you're like, hey, Marjorie, I love that you were so friendly. Like you weren't (laughs) like, so like, oh, that's Keandra and Lorraine's friend. And I appreciated that. That made me want to like be more open to you and like be friends with you so that's so cool very nice of you to be like that I remember when I first met you I was like you always just say like literally exactly what you mean you know and I, that, I like, that so sounds kind of bad but no it's not, but I mean it I genuinely mean it in the best way possible you just don't beat around the bush and I oh god I love that I love it <laughs> Well, I guess. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> no, but um, I always keep reminding you of this, that I remember the first time that I met you, that we were in Cameron's party and you said like, I think you were drunk or something. And you were like, I want to be your friend, Margie. Yes. Like, you're so cool. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> because Keandra and Lorena had talked about you so much that I was like, who is this Margie person? <laughs> what is going on? And then I saw you and I was like, you. We are going to be friends. <laughs> no, yeah. I like you drunk. You're really... No. Hi? Oh, we have to talk about our hi story. We met in college and everything, and we, we started to hang out. For my birthday, I said, hey, let's all go to, like, uh, Marfa. It's, like, a, a little place in Texas that's, like, a really small town, but it's so, like, artsy. I don't know how to explain it, but there's, like, nothing there. How would you describe Marfa? You, you said you liked Marfa. Yeah, yeah. I really liked Marfa. It's just like a little itty bitty town. It's like a little island oasis in the middle of the mountains of Big Bend. It was freezing and windy. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yes. I mean, we we went there to camp and everything. We went there and then we took some Instagram pictures. We went to the Gucci store, which was nice. The Prada. Oh, oh, Prada. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. You can tell I'm not fancy. (laughs) That I don't know. I mean, For me personally, I didn't like the place, but I mean, overall the experience and like all of us together was such a great experience. We went to like this camping site. It was very hippie-like and everything. In the end, we said like, hey, let's just smoke weed. Where did, who who brought the weed? Like, like, did it? (laughs) Did we say not to? Because like, well, here's the thing. No. Y'all were like, we probably shouldn't smoke while we're there because like we'll be on a campground and like we'll be close to other people. And I brought it (laughs) just in case. Okay, yeah. Katie brought weed and then we, how do you say that that phrase hot tin or what? Uh, Hot box. Hot box, which means what? You smoke in in like an enclosed area, usually like in like your car or like Yeah, in this case, we used a tent so that the smoke can't escape and it sort of makes everybody get a little bit more of like a secondhand high, even if you're not smoking. And like each breath you take, you're just breathing in more smoke. Does it actually work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, after a while, you start to like, (laughs) because you're not getting enough oxygen, you're just breathing smoke. You gotta crack the window or something. I don't know why, but we were laughing so much about stupid shit. Keanu was asleep the whole time. I got a rock. She just found a rock on the floor. She was asleep and she said, I found a rock. And we laughed like crying. But then you had to be there. Yeah, you had to be there. Sorry, but you had to be there. That was such a great experience. And that's when I realized, Katie. I want to be friends with you. (laughs) Like, well, I mean, I was friends, like more and more than friends. I feel like we got closer there. I brought you here today in particular because I wanted to talk about something that we both did together this summer, which was Mexico. 
And I wanted to know your experience and everything. I invited Kiandra, Lorraine, Katie, and Jimmy to Mexico because, yeah, I'm from Mexico. And I said, hey, I want to invite you guys. Uh, let's let's hang out. Like, let's do it. What did you think in the beginning of everything? Like, what was your first instinct? Uh, when you asked me yeah. if I wanted to go to Mexico, I was like, <laughs> my first thought was that would be so fun. <laughs> my parents will never let me go. Yes. And that's something that I want to talk about, actually, too. Tell us about what... Well, I mean, first, I want to know, like, your reaction. You said that you wanted to go. I wasn't afraid to tell my mom. I know that my mom would think that it's fine, but... I had talked to my dad on a couple occasions. I think we were talking about like going on a cruise or something like that, or like visiting like Cancun or uh, Cabo. He was like, yeah, those are the only two cities in Mexico I would ever go to. And I remember mm -hmm. asking him like, why? Mexico seems like a party, like it seems so fun. <laughs> and he, at that, I was like really little and he was, he started talking about his opinion on what he thought goes on in Mexico. And he scared me a lot about it and i knew that he still held those same beliefs as i got older i just knew that he there was no way he would ever let me go to mexico he said we couldn't even go there on a cruise no yeah i remember that when i asked you if you wanted to go we weren't planning to go with you in the beginning like do you remember that we were like oh like we're just going and we'll see if katie can come or convince us, her parents i remember that we all sat down together and we were all like facetiming our parents and see if they can let us and then you decided to facetime or call your mom or your, or your parents i remember that your mom was like more like oh yeah let, let's see you have to tell your dad and that's mm -hmm. when you call your dad and i was like wow okay i didn't know And I'm gonna say this like respectfully. I didn't know there was still people that mm. thought like that. You know what I mean? It was just very impressive to hear his opinions because I mean, I've heard of people say stuff like that, but I never experienced that like that, you know? Like so but, directly. Yeah, so directly. So I was like, oh, okay. I mean, just hearing that, I was like, now that I heard that, now I wanna take Katie more just mm -hmm. so she can change her mind and try to show her parents that look dad or look mom i went to mexico this is what happened nothing of what you said happened that's why i was like katie please you have to go you have to convince them hey you had an amazing time yeah, I had so much fun i had so much fun yeah, I yeah. Mean, tell us about your experience and everything oh my gosh it was so much fun i remember the first night that we were there like we we got there on the airplane and then we went straight to your house and your right. dad had um what's that drink called it's like sangria um i don't know um, clericot clericot yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, uh, your dad had, had pictures of that ready for yeah. us. Yeah, he was ready to talk to you guys. He's like, okay, no rules in this house. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, you can call me Mexican daddy. We oh, said, yeah, yeah. Hey, got it. <laughs> So fun. And then we like went and got like dressed up a little bit and it was your grandfather's birthday. Yes. So like the whole family was coming over and y'all yeah. had a, a mariachi band come out. And All play. right. <laughs> that was so fun. That was so fun. Yeah, um, I feel like the whole week you guys were drunk. <laughs> like, dude, yeah. like, now that I look into that, like, yes, you guys were drunk every single day. Well, we were drinking every single day. Like we didn't have like one day. But yeah, I remember like the day you guys came that's when like we started drinking the shots of tequila clary yes. god we were like even in the mornings we were like oh my god yes. shot. <laughs> it was bad it was no it it's was a so good ex <laughs> it's a great experience to talk about the next day we, we ate gorditas oh yes and then we went to el bosque you had the the drink what i really loved about all of this is that Keanu and Lorraine were so lost with the spanish but you and jimmy were kind of like okay okay we get it we get it so it was nice that you at least knew how to like say some stuff and you were learning spanish like yo entiendo más de lo que hablo exactly that was your phrase and it helped you a lot <laughs> that's yeah. all i know how to say <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. We went to the mall. Mm, and then we ate there. Well, we had some drinks there. 
yeah we had um oysters right yes yes <laughs> um and just yeah. like so many drinks like i think each of us probably ordered like three or four drinks <laughs> yes and it was crazy because okay i drink a lot but like i didn't want it you guys to like like i didn't want to rush you guys or pressure you to drink but you guys were like okay another one another one <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole month before we went we threw parties every weekend and we were drinking just all the time and anytime <laughs> one of us was like no like i think i'm good or like no thank you i don't feel like drinking tonight someone else would be like no you have to practice for mexico come on take, take a shot that makes sense yeah because you guys would drink more and like oh my god the day that we went to the vineyard i okay yes we we were drinking and drinking and drinking and i was oh the god. one driving and i said hey let's chill for a bit because i need to like you know drive but you then drive. yeah i felt it a little bit in the vineyard and then we got home and you guys were like okay let's keep drinking i'm like that's when i said okay i drink a lot but that's i'm i'm done i'm done here but you guys kept going and then we went to the pool and everything and you guys yes. i was like god damn jimmy and i shared a whole bottle of wine just me and jimmy in, in the back at, of at the, the car yes vineyard. at the second vineyard we went to. we drank a bottle of wine <laughs> from the mouth because they didn't have any they didn't uh, have cups and we drank it in a church <laughs> We threw a party in my house with all my friends mm -hmm. and everything. We did like a carne asada, everything. And yeah, you met some interesting people, right? Yeah, very interesting people. I, mean, I told Katie, hey, Katie, <laughs> just have fun. Enjoy yourself. When are you going to be able to? And then she said, oh, my type is Mexican people. I'm like, done, done. Enjoy yourself. You're going to be gone. You're not going to come back. <laughs> no, I was fully like, I was like, so who's trying to? <laughs> No, <laughs> it was so, it was so ridiculous. I'm so. Hey, that oh, and, mentality, and it was what happens in Mexico stays in Mexico. And it worked. Exactly. <laughs> it, it totally worked. Yes, absolutely. Oh my God. That, that night was so funny. It was yeah. so, we were like playing volleyball and oh, like Priscilla with her little, he said, the magic ball says you should kiss or whatever. Yeah. Magic ball says you two kiss. I love your friends so much. They're all so cool. It was so cool. And then we went to Mazatlan, which Masa. was such a great experience. Oh my um, gosh. What'd you think of that? It was beautiful. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. The condo that we were staying at, that we were oh, at. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Margie. That was direct view of the beach, like 15 floors up. Oh, so cool. So cool. It was really cool until the light turned out. Oh my God, we were gonna go to, and, and shut up, you didn't even know, you were busy somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we were planning on going to a club in Mazapan because yeah, why not? We want to get drunk, whatever. And then it started raining and pouring, but it was also so late and no one wanted to go. Everyone was like, Kendra was already asleep and everything. Jimmy was sunburned, which was a whole Wait, other thing. Sunburned. It was just me and Loreen and we were like, hey, should we go? Should we just tell everyone? And then after that, it started raining a lot, like raining, raining raining, pouring, pouring. And we're like, shit, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then we realized that, yeah, I don't think we're going to go because it's like really, really bad. After that, the lights went off and that's when we realized, okay, this is scary. Like, we're going to die. We're gonna I really thought we were going to die for a second. And then it was like, what, 3 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> we started to make our own party there. We put music on with the lights off. And then that's when <laughs> Jimmy... Jimmy just came so sad because Jimmy got sunburned. Like at 3 a.m. he woke up and he's like, I'm so sad. Like he was like, I'm going to hell or something like that. Or we put him in a bath. We put green tea on the on the bath. It was like ice water. And we put him in there with his swimsuit. He started shaking so much. And I think that's when like it started to like react to it. It was like shaking like that in the bathtub. So it was so <laughs> funny because like the lights were off. It was like 3, 4 a.m. We had flashing lights on him on a bathtub like and so it Different. looked like we were doing like a possession to him. And y'all were playing Nicki Minaj. And he yeah, was singing along. 
we feel bad. He's like, okay, we're, we're going to play you some music just so you can like forget about it. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> and we put Nicki Minaj or something. He's like, but I don't know. I don't know what to say. But he was rapping while shaking and he really he's like, shivering. He's like, this one is for the boys who the yes. boys. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. I was laughing. I was like, oh my God. That was a great experience. And then I thought it was such a great trip. And I'm so, so glad that you went and everything. And I just want to know how was your expectation before and then after you went and how did it change or how was was it different for you? Well, for starters, there wasn't like a brown orange filter. <laughs> over the whole thing yeah which was pleasant to see uh <laughs> i don't know what i really expected honestly i think i was trying not to expect anything honestly just like see what see what happened i was sitting next to loreen on the on the plane ride in and we're like looking out and it's like all the houses are flat on top mm. which they're like not in the united states i think like because of like snow and stuff like that but yeah and loreen looked out the window and she goes, where are the mountains? <laughs> and I was like, um, well, not right here. And she was like, I thought it would be like, like mountains. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I mean, somewhere, maybe just not like right here. I sort of was expecting to feel a little bit more like on edge there, um, just because of like what my dad was telling me. And, you know, I was still trying, like, I wasn't scared or anything, but I was still trying to be like a little bit vigilant, but Yeah, no, I got there and I felt like totally safe. I was like, this is like we pulled into a gas station and they you actually have gas station attendants in Mexico. Oh, we yeah. don't we don't have those in the States. I remember feeling like really safe and like calm and like, oh, this is just like a cute little city. Like it's so fun. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like San Antonio. Like it wasn't, yeah, just a little bit. I really hope that you can come back and see like a big city such as Mexico City or even though it was my home and everything, I don't think that's the best Mexico can offer. I mm -hmm. think you should definitely go to Mexico City just so you can see like the pyramids of like, oh, like the oldest pyramids ever. And then just like <laughs> the culture and everything, because like the north part, which is where I live, I feel like it's it's kind of like the US or Texas or it's it's getting more into that area of cowboys and you know and then cancun which is what where most people go you can see chichen itza which is one of the seven wonders of the world and that's where most people go after they vacation so i mean yeah go to cancun but i mean if you want to go to like the tourist area make sure to also go to the local area because like most people especially like americans they get scared of leaving their hotel room or their resort because they're like oh we're gonna get killed if we leave but no like i feel like they They should experience more like why would you go to like a hotel in a place that you just like the beach and everything like if you're in a new city go like visit it go see where you are like don't go to just like oh i just want to go to the beach and take pictures and whatever like no see where you are eat the food that you're from like visit the local visit everything That's the mentality that I want to put in my head every time I visit a new country or a new place because yes, the tourist things are cool sometimes, but then it's like, like if someone says, oh yeah, I've been to this, I've been to that, I've been to this, but did you actually, like, were you actually there? You know, because you were just there for the tourist part. You weren't actually there and learned and visited museums or actually talked to people that were there. Like, I definitely think all of you guys learned about Mexico and visited Mexico. Mm -hmm. instead of the tourist area so very little people go to mexico and visit it because they think all of it is dangerous the stereotype of oh yeah you're gonna step foot in mexico oh you're gonna get killed oh you're gonna like so many stuff you're gonna get kidnapped you're gonna get drugs on you whatever like it's not like that at all yes there are dangerous areas in mexico but that's everywhere you know so, like lubbock where i am right now was just voted the third most dangerous city in the United States per capita. Third, third in the whole of the United States. There you go. It's something that I've also realized and I, I wanted to ask you, what did you see different from the people from Mexicans and Americans, did you see like a different type of like way of how we live or like how we talk or personality? I felt like a lot of people were super patient 
with me trying to speak Spanish to them, but usually the response was, okay, I'm sorry, English. <laughs> I mean, except for like a couple cases, everybody was just so nice and like super like welcoming in the in the US. We don't kiss cheeks. Oh, like the yeah, first yeah. couple times that happened, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Um, yeah. I think there are a couple times I, I like came this close to like kissing <laughs> someone on the lips. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that's the word. Yeah, we're very welcoming when it comes to that. Yes. And the thing that I also love when it comes to dating is that I feel like Mexicans are more gentlemen than the U.S. And mm -hmm. that's something that I've always wondered. And I'm like, damn, I feel like I do need to date a Mexican because I grew up with those cultures. What's that word when when a guy thinks he's very masculine? He thinks he's like, oh, I'm a man, you know, like machismo. Yes, there are a lot of machismos in Mexico, yeah. which which sucks. But I feel like since society is evolving, it's changing And now it's more chivalry. And I like that a lot because they're very romantic. And I don't want to stereotype because I don't know that much about the U.S. And I've only lived in Lubbock for four or five years. But mm -hmm. in Lubbock, in my four or five years that I've lived there, I've never experienced anything like that at all. Yeah. I feel like maybe it's because it's college guys or whatever, but I never felt like that sort of romantic side or a chivalry side of what I see in Mexico. Yeah, I think guys here are like they'll they'll open the door for you if they're about to go through that door. They'll yeah. like open the car door for you but they when they're getting in, but they will not open it for you when you get out. I mean, it's just like little things honestly, but like when I was growing up, my dad always taught me that When you're walking to, on the sidewalk, guys should always walk in between yeah. you and the street. And never once have I experienced a guy like making an effort to do that in the United States. And I have been on plenty of dates. Okay, I think I have a pretty good <laughs> sample size of <laughs> things to go off of. Guys in Mexico just are just a little bit more polite and, yeah. and chivalrous. I would like to say, what advice would you tell people, anyone that hasn't been to mexico anyone that is afraid something that especially you as a white person i'd say don't treat it like you're always scared of some like someone jumping out from behind a corner or anything like that like trust your gut relax a lot and do your best to um appreciate everything that area has to offer like go taste the local food go um you know experience the local things like go to a park talk to people see everybody has a different story to tell and i think it's really interesting to hear everything that people have to say be open to experiencing it don't try to have any expectations take things as they come and appreciate things for what they are i love that thank you katie Thank you for talking to me today. This was awesome. Anything else that you want to say? Anything? Thank you for having me on. I miss talking to you. I miss you a oh, lot. Yeah, I miss you a lot too. And I mean, anytime you want to come to LA or anything. I mean, let's start planning it now. I want to come to yeah, LA. Yeah, you're more than welcome. And hey, we can also plan another trip to Mexico or any anywhere else. <laughs> okay, cool. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Please go and follow Katie Mitchell on Instagram. She's a um, makeup artist. She did an amazing makeup to Loreen. Here's a picture. <laughs> that's so, oh my God, Katie, that's amazing. That looks yeah. so cool. She also did my makeup for an Instagram picture. Here's a <laughs> Follow her. She does amazing makeup. If you ever want to have your makeup done professionally by Katie, go DM her. And yeah, if you guys want to listen to more, please go to Listen and Chill pod on instagram give this a like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next episode thank you and goodbye, goodbye. <laughs>